So up until this point, I I've been uh, following my 80-20 rule, which is 80% original content. Now let's look at the 20%, the repurposed content, other people's content. So I might get eventually writer's block. What else am I going to share again? So we can look at the competition, um, either direct or indirect competition. And the way we do that is couple of ways. One is search and one are the topics. This little compass at the top here, if you click on that, that's explore. This will show you various things. Explore today's picks, um, today's picks, everything, food, etc. And then categories. So your content, what, however the algorithm dictates it, will eventually show up in these various topics because I see education, illustration, food, etc. Tattoos, etc. So let's say I'm gonna go over to food on the left side because my business is in the food category. So I'm gonna see here then trending, picked for you, trending, etc. So I'm seeing content related to food and then even more ideas. And notice again ideas rather than pins or posts. They fancy themselves more active. People using Pinterest, it's grown into a network where people are more active. They want to do something, see something, read something, consume something, try something themselves. Yes, buy something, but uh, this photo and everything here is uh, all of this for advertising. You get to some of the more advanced ways to share as you see the competition. But under explore here, what I'm getting at is let's say I find some sort of picture that could relate to my uh, topic. I'm just going to pick something randomly. It doesn't really relate, but let's just say this... Uh, we do have a cupcake picture. Oh, I see some over here. Uh, we can borrow this one here. Uh, mudslide jello shots in cookie shot glass. So, okay, here's a baking related thing. I didn't create it. I am going to give them a little free publicity, but I'm going to jazz up what I'm sharing once in a while. This is related again to the other reasons why we repurpose people's content. I'm about to give a notification to uh, Malt Frog. Uh, Etc. Uh, I'm gonna give a, a free. I'm gonna give a notification to here or to Linda, etc. That I exist. Right now, no one knows I exist on Pinterest. When I start to follow accounts, they will know that I exist. And if I also share their stuff, they will know that I exist. The purpose of that, as we've seen for every other network, then, when someone knows I exist, they may then ignore me. They may then like my own pins, they may then comment on my own pins, they may then follow my account, and I'm always trying to build followers. So let's say this one I want to reshare. So if I hover over any one of these pins, I guess various actions, I get the like, which that could be a way too. Now they got a notification, Victor's Bakery liked your pin. I have other ways to share it. This is to go send it off to other networks. And then I have save, which I don't like that they called it save. They used to call it repin, because that made sense. I'm going to take their pin. I'm going to pin it as my own account. I'm sort of like forwarding it to my followers. Now they're calling it save. So I'm saving someone else's pin to my boards. Or I can create a board. Here's some suggestions. So I'm going to share this. Let's say it made sense to put it into Halloween treats. So I took someone else's pin. I shared it to my pin board. And in my pin board, if I go back to my profile, someone else's stuff is on my account. And that's fine. That's part of the social, of social media. That's why I'm keeping it to 20% or so. It's all my original content. I'm going to share other people's content once in a while. The big idea for that is it makes other people aware that I exist. So one way to build followers. Another way to build followers.
like other pins, share, aka reshare, aka save, aka repin, whatever they decide to call it, share others pins. Thank you. So then is their link also traveling with that pin? Yes. This is the part of that free publicity. I'm giving someone else free publicity. It's a bit of a necessary evil. I'm sharing someone else's pins to make them aware I exist, which may result in me getting a follow. But I am giving someone else free advertising. But alternate, alternatively, you could click on their pin, go to their site, and then share that. Yeah. Would there be an advantage one way or the other? No, nope, it's all the same way that it's someone else's content. So I, I could go directly to uh, below every pin, there's there's their account. So I could go directly to their account. So here's going over to Pinterest slash tablespoon. And from here I could share their content to my account. Notice they do they do have the showcase, so that looks pretty nice. Content. So things have been pinned and repinned and repinned. Is the whole trail of pinnings going to show up in some way? Not really the whole trail, but still the attribution to the originator. So I shared, I shared this, and looking at it, it has the attribution that they put their link back to their website. It has then who created it, which is their name right there, and then it has that they wrote the whole recipe here. And then it, it does say that uh, it, who it came from, but not every single person that pinned it and repinned it. If there are comments, they will show up there too, and where they've been saved. I don't get the uh, floating options that you get. You know. These at the top? No. Um, when you brought your cursor over the top of one, I don't have the heart on the share pin. No, let's let's take a look. It looks like a couple of people have a slightly different version of Pinterest here. Yeah, your problems are different. It's not that it's important to you. Just to try to do a refresh on the browser. And hover right here. Let's go now. Okay, well, click, uh, click on the one with the magnifying glass. Maybe it's really different. Maybe, maybe it shows it different in different browsers. Oh, yeah, I'm in Chrome. Yeah, maybe this is a maybe this is A B testing. Maybe Pinterest is testing on us right now. For some people you'll see a paper plate, for some of you you'll see the little atoms or whatever. For some of you you won't see it. Maybe Pinterest is just kind of trying to figure out it's most effective if we use the paper airplane, if we use the share atoms, if we don't put it. So they're probably testing on us. <clears throat> I know, they should be paying us. But in any event, you should still see the save, which is, the, which is that uh, re-share. So that's one of the ways, then, to build this audience, to interact with other people's content. Along these lines, instead of this uh, discover, we could do search. So use discover to find interesting pins and pinners, Pinterest accounts, and interact with them. Comment, save, follow. You get what you give in social media. You give likes, you get likes back. You give comments, you get some comments back. You follow, you get follows back. Unfortunately, not always one-to-one. -one. I may spend, I may give myself a plan that today will be the day that I'm going to comment on 10 people's pins, and tomorrow I'm going to like 10 people's pins, and the day after that I'm going to repin 10 people's pins whatever goal you have. 
And then out of those 10 comments, I may get five comments to my stuff and one follow. Or I may get zero follows and zero comments. It happens. Out of those 10 follows that I gave, I may then get nine that followed me back. I may get zero. But it's free. The time is the investment. So one way to use any of these networks, if I'm not sharing something new, I'm being active. I'm liking, I'm retweeting, I'm searching. So now I'll search. At the top here, it seems that at the current moment, I think Dr. Seuss Day just passed yesterday, or it's today, and so the Dr. Seuss Crafts topic is on people's minds on Pinterest still. St. Patrick's Day is coming up, so St. Patrick's Day Crafts for Kids. I'm a bakery. I'm going to put St. Patrick's Day themed baked goods. So I'll make a St. Patrick's Day board and put pictures of my food capitalizing on St. Patrick's Day. Well, how should those look? I'll go off to this topic and see what other people are doing and get an idea. Again, I'm not stealing anything. I'm getting an idea. I can make cookies that look like little uh, pots of gold. I can make uh, leprechaun cakes and all of that. So, um, I cancel that. That was a topic that was uh, trending at the moment, and a lot of times perhaps a topic won't quite fit. And I'm a realtor, and quinoa recipes aren't going to help me today. So, I could type a topic to actually search for. Uh, so, let's say I'm typing um, healthy, and it'll start to recommend people, boards, or topics. Again, if I've made boards with the keywords healthy recipes, my board could possibly show up here. If my account is about healthy things, my bio and such, my I could show up there. Healthy recipes easy. Let's see what happens there. And that's just searching for the keywords healthy recipes easy. It'll show me pins, people, boards. If I go through the process of setting up buyable pins, which we don't, I don't quite talk about it in the class, but you need to look it up yourself in the settings. Buyable pins, buyable pins. There is a way for you to set up a pin that it is more directly goes to a shop to sell your product much more directly. Not everyone needs it, so on your own you're going to look up buyable pins. But searching healthy recipes and easy will show me all the pins on Pinterest. The algorithm in some way decides how to show these based on a variety of things like how many times people have already pinned it, commented on it, the popularity of the account, some formula, some algorithm. Any pins that you have, based on those keywords, none. That might be an idea for me to do. Any pins that have been set up to directly buy the item, often like books and such. People that have these keywords in their biographies or names. Boards. So boards that have been set up to display healthy recipes. Easy. So searching here. We do it to find content to interact with, to get back interactions. Other people do it to find things to buy, to do, to plan, etc. The reason people hang out on Pinterest. It may suggest to me further topics. Make note of that, because then I get an idea of snacks. So I might use the keyword snacks somewhere in the next pin that I post. Again, getting the inspiration of what people are sharing. So over here with HelloFresh, that's not uh, an impossible photo to create. It's at an angle it's cropped vertically, the whole plate is not visible. 
that's a style compared to this one over here that the whole plate is visible but the difference there is that this is a picture that was designed with one here text in the middle and then another picture below it a close-up you cannot at the moment Pinterest does not have any features for you to edit your photos in a creative way it'll only accept your photos complete probably eventually Pinterest will give us the ability to actually make a photo nice in Pinterest as we share it. In order for us to do something like this, we could use many free or paid services. One that I really like is Pixlr.com. I think I've mentioned it before. Pixlr.com is a way for you to go and for free crop your photos, add a filter, add text, combine a photo collage for free. It's like Photoshop's little brother. You can go here for free and there's plenty of other ways. But this is one way to stand out. As I look at the competition, there's a lot of examples where it's a photo with text on it. I can't do that in Pinterest. I have to have my photo ready. In Pixlr, the, um, the Pixlr editor or Express is the quick way to add effects and text and such, or the more powerful one of editor. I set up my pictures here and then I'm ready to upload on Pinterest. Can you embed your web link in the photo? Yes, you can. It's not an active link, however. Like here, tasty... What is that? Tasty... Tasteandsee.com. They put their link on their picture, but it's not an active link. However, in Pinterest, when we upload it, we can have our link there, and it'll go back to our site. This is useful, however, as a watermark. If this does pass around, then it goes off onto Facebook, for example. My address will still be on it, and not be an active link, but it'll have my credit and my link if someone chooses to actually type the address. So let's see some more of the competition. A lot of, uh, especially food items, the best photos are close-ups, like real good close-ups. Not that the f not that the plate of food is here and I'm here taking a photo. No, the food plate of food is there and I'm here taking a photo to show the detail, to show the searing and the and the sauce and the tastiness, and to really get people to say, "I'm hungry." Let me click on that. So you will mostly see that close-ups. This photo right here is not that appetizing. Sticky cinnamon roll, but reading that it's a sticky cinnamon roll baked packed with protein. Okay, now I'm convinced I might want to click. The photo itself is not that good. Garlic, Parmesan, crusted salmon, and asparagus. Juliasalbum.com. Pretty simple photo, pretty straightforward, but the text. The ones that take the most effort, but are very popular, are a sequence. That took a lot of effort in that I'm cooking the thing and pausing every moment to take a photo. And then, in Pixlr or Photoshop, I'm combining all the photos together. And I'm putting my watermark of the address. Those are very popular because it's a sequence to show people beginning to end. The best Pinterest photos. have one or more of these ideas. Good lighting, close up, text, collage, which could be sequential. I'm not saying all the time do text and collage and close up and light. Uh, I'm saying always do good lighting, but I'm not saying do all of these at once. Think about changing it up. If my goal is one pin per week, this week I'm going to do a photo of my product, which is a close-up with good lighting. Next week I'm going to do a, a picture of my photo, maybe a little bit further back, and then add the text with good lighting. And then the week after that I'm going to give a shot. I'm going to try the collage. I'm going to put four pictures um, together and share it. And notice that 
most of the pictures are vertical. It almost looks like a cascade. I'm scrolling down and most of these pictures are vertical. So most effective also is a vertical picture. If you've got a picture that you took that is wide, it won't crop it or anything, but it'll be smaller than the rest because it has to fit it within the Pinterest grid. Let's see if I can find one. I'm going to scroll, scroll down far over here. Maybe we'll find a horizontal picture, but most people nowadays, Pinterest has been around maybe 10 years now, most people have figured out you want to do a vertical picture. And here's one that's a video. Notice how that one stands out. It's got the play button. Why is the vertical better? Just because it fits in the... It fits in their grid. It, it fits in their design. If you're going to do a video, one of the popular ways to do videos is this fast motion type. This would normally take like 10 minutes to set up. They recorded it for 10 minutes, then they put the fast forward feature on their video editor, and then now the whole thing is condensed down to one minute instead of 10 minutes. This is more complex in that they're recording different shots, different scenes. It's much more work than simply just recording your camera. Here's a close up. But when we talk about, on the day that we talk about YouTube, we, we're going to talk about this stuff, how to do fast forward, how to do editing and cuts and music and all of that. I have my volume off. But um, you know, here's a lot of effort and the result of this uh, for comments. It's been pinned 25,000 times. Um, the person that tweeted it, well, it's from BuzzFeed. They're a big name. But, you know, popularity breeds popularity. And um, seven likes, one unlike. Is pinning a video just like pinning a photo? Yes. You just basically upload it. Although I believe it's a lot easier to, to pin photos through the app because we can make the video right on our device and upload it directly to Notice it's not as common. Uh, I'm browsing and browsing and browsing, and this is the first video that has shown up. Once I see one video, then it's going to start to show me more videos. And suddenly I looked at the time. So I'm going to need to start to wrap up. Any quick general questions about Pinterest? Is the hierarchy the same? Like, share, comment? Yeah. Is like is the lowest one. Follow is the highest one, and then in between. And the same deal.